Welcome to our weekly time of prayer. We began a section with Psalm 50 and Psalm 73 to 82, all of them attributed to Asaf, generally called Book 3, and today we reflect on Psalm 83, the last in the section. We wish to take a break from the reflections on Psalms and will resume, God willing, on May 11th. Our time of prayer will continue with requests being circulated. The Psalms attributed to Asaf and later the family members called Asaphites is interesting because prophecy through music and prayer through song. Initially during David's reign and later they return after the exile and continue to perform in the temple. The Asaphites remind us that music has a prophetic purpose and contribute immensely to the worship life of the people. We are all familiar with the saying there is light at the end of the tunnel. But we do not dare to believe this when enemies are growing in number and joining hands. In verse 4, they say, Come, let us wipe them out as a nation. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. And in verse 8, the threat is bigger as Assyria also joined them. They further say in verse 12, Let us take the pastures of God for our own position. While reading this, I somehow started thinking of the Six-Day War in 1967 or the Arab-Israeli War where we saw all the neighbors of Israel getting together. Israel did manage to hold on to its territory, but thousands of people were displaced and lost their lives. The threat of the enemy is real to Israel till date. The purpose of prayer is not to give up, but to invoke God's intervention and deliverance to protect God's people. The prayer recalls what God has done in the past when other rulers planned to take control and the literary record of the recollection appears in Judges 4 to 8. The Psalms reminds us that the greatest resource of the people of God is prayer, which appeals directly to God. The kingdoms appear to undermine the kingdom of God and the psalmist continues to pray because the ideal kingdom may not be there but we must continue to trust in it. We must keep praying, keep hoping and keep trusting because we want to realize the kingdom of God. I'd like to take you through the experiences of early Christians through the Roman Empire, through Pliny who was governor. When Pliny was governor of Bithynia, he wrote a most interesting letter to the Roman Emperor Trajan asking why Christians were being exterminated and added, I have been trying to get all the information I could regarding them. I have even hired spies to profess to be Christians and become baptized in order that they might get into the Christian services without suspicion. Contrary to what I had supposed, I find that the Christians meet at dead of night or at early morn, that they sing a hymn to Christ as God, that they read from their own sacred writings and partake of a very simple meal consisting of bread and wine and water. The water added to the wine to dilute it in order that they might be enough for all. This is all that I can find out, except that they exhort each other to be subject to the government and pray for all men." Unquote. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that you be gracious to us and bless us. May your way be known upon earth and the saving power among all nations. We pray to you, O God, and may we sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations. We pray in faith for the celebration of justice and peace. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you.